1977 tour for Pink Floyd's 10th album, Animals, consisted of 55 shows spread across two continents. It was their most ambitious tour to date, featuring a $2 million sound system, a host of innovative effects, and a crew of 52 to make it all happen. Nearly every date sold out, and some shows grossed over a half a million dollars in a single night, but despite its financial success, for Pink Floyd, the tour was less than a breeze. They dealt with technical difficulties, interpersonal struggles, and audience issues, all resulting in Roger Waters calling it the second worst experience in his life. But before we dive into all the details, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Manscaped. All right, guys, one thing you know about me is that I'm pretty clean cut. I love looking and feeling my best, and that's where Manscaped comes in. And they just released this brand new nose and ear hair trimmer called the Weed Whacker. And I gotta be honest, this is the best trimmer I have ever used. Every other one I've tried tickles my nose and I hate it, so I just end up plucking them out by hand and it's super painful, but this is the complete opposite. I, I love it. But their flagship model is the Lawn Mower 3.0 and this thing is a dream to use. It's got skin safe tech which believe me is vital for trimming down there. Plus it's got an LED light, it's waterproof and it lasts up to 90 minutes. I highly recommend you check out their performance package. You get both trimmers plus anti-chafing boxers and a whole lot more. Right now, you can help support the channel and get 20% off plus free shipping for yourself with the code VinylRewind at manscaped.com. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping. Just follow the link below and use the code VinylRewind at checkout. In November of 1976, recording for Animals was almost complete and plans were forming for the upcoming tour. They knew it was going to be bigger and more popular than their last tour because they were in essence not only promoting Animals, but the incredibly successful Wish You Were Here as well. For this tour, they knew they were going to be performing in large arenas and stadiums, having played these same venues on their last tour. And they also understood that the size of these required them to engage the very back rows as well as the front, and they found the best way to do this was with large-scale visuals and effects. These included their quadraphonic sound system, a model airplane, pyrotechnics, several fog machines, a giant mirrorball pinwheel, two highly articulated manned lighting rigs, and the centerpiece, a 40-foot circular projection screen known as Mr. Screen. A couple of new visuals were made specifically for the animal show, including a giant inflatable pig. This pig known as Alfie graced the front cover, but with its rather slight smile, Roger wanted something a little more menacing for the tour version where the audience would see it up close. A new pig was constructed using Alfie's pattern and given more painted details. They also commissioned another film from artist Gerald Scarf. This new animation would accompany the song Welcome to the Machine, and according to Melody Maker, it costs around 100,000 pounds and took Gerald and a team of animators six months to produce. The first leg of the tour kicked off in Dortmund, Germany, roughly the same day as the album's release. They then traveled through Throughout Europe, playing indoor arenas in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. The set list for the entirety of the tour remained relatively constant. In the first half, they played every song off of Animals, albeit in a different order. Before the show started, various sound effects were played through the quadraphonic speaker system, including a jet airplane taking off, signaling the start of the show. The band then started with the song Sheep, which concluded with a shower of fireworks. This was followed by Pigs on a Wing Part 1, then Dogs, then Pigs on a Wing Part 2 with an added guitar solo. The grand finale of the first half of the show was Pigs, three different ones. Before the song began, pig sounds were played over the loudspeakers, and then came the opening keyboard riff. As the song progressed, in the middle of the third verse, the inflatable pig would rise from behind the band out of a burst of smoke. It then traveled the length of the indoor arena and back again, sailing above the audience using a cable that was up to 1,500 feet long. It was also during this song that Roger took to shouting numbers that supposedly corresponded to how many gigs the band had played up to that point. Many have theorized that this was a way to help identify what show the inevitable bootlegs came from, but we do know for certain that these numbers correlate to the names of cities written on Nick's drumhead. Pigs also featured extended guitar solos by David Gilmour and a unique keyboard solo by Richard Wright. After Pigs, a small intermission took place and then they played the entirety of Wish You Were Here in album order, the first time they played every song off the record in a live setting. 
During the first five parts of Shine On You Crazy Diamond, they projected a short film by Gerald Scarf, followed by his new animation for Welcome to the Machine. To kick off the song Wish You Were Here, they tuned in live broadcast from a radio that was mic'd on stage. The final parts of Shine On You Crazy Diamond featured another Gerald Scarf animation, which would be obscured towards the song's conclusion by the rising of the mirror ball pinwheel. For the encore, they generally played Money and Us and Them, and each song had its own film. However, they didn't always play these songs. Sometimes the show ended with Money or no encore at all. It really depended on how the band felt at the time. When the tour moved to the UK, inflatables were added to the song Dogs. Andrew Sanders and Mark Fisher worked on the designs, while Jonathan Park focused on the engineering. Referencing the album's themes of a flawed capitalist society, these new inflatables were the ideal nuclear age family, consisting of a businessman representing the dog in the song Dogs, his wife, and his literal two and a half kids. Each inflatable was lit from the inside with light bulbs. At the beginning of Dogs, they were raised using a motorized system designed by Jonathan Park. This gave the illusion they were floating in the air. The father was on a separate system because near the end of the song, he was intentionally deflated while his family were lowered behind the stage. As the song came to an end, the father became a crumpled mass as if being dragged down by the stone in reference to the song's lyrics. By April of 1977, the tour moved to North America and it was called In the Flesh. It was broken up into two legs with about a month break between them. Unlike the shows in Europe and England, many of these dates were played in massive coliseums and so three more inflatables were added to the song Dogs. A TV set, a Cadillac car, and a refrigerator that could open and spill out inflatable worms. Collapsible umbrellas were also added that raised and lowered from the stage floor in an effort to provide shade for the band as well as protection from the rainfall in open air stadiums. The last major changes only happened at outdoor venues. During the song Sheep, they employed a cannon that fired several dozen cloth sheep about 250 feet into the air, which then gracefully floated down to the audience. Another change happened only one time at the Cleveland show. Instead of the plain sound effect to open the concert, their tour the roaring 737 jet buzzed the stadium and the band was later fined $1,500 for flying too close to the ground. Lastly, depending on the venue, at the conclusion of the song Pigs, the inflatable pig was replaced with a cheaper version that was detonated using a mixture of propane and helium. However, at the Milwaukee show, they experimented with a combination of acetylene and oxygen which created a fantastic explosion. <laughs> But the boom was so big it damaged cars in the parking lot and sent flaming bits of pig onto the stage. Needless to say, no more pigs were exploded for the rest of the tour. While the animals tour was winning over their fans, some of the press were less than favorable. The general sentiment was that the show was overpowering the music. In other words, because the songs and the visuals needed to be in sync, the music could feel stale and get lost in all the spectacle. To stay in sync, the band used a click track that could sometimes be heard by the audience as well. The sophisticated sound system also had its own issues. When it worked, it was a great sensory experience. The problem was that in larger stadiums, the quadraphonic system and the conventional stage-mounted speakers were at odds with each other and had the habit of creating multiple beats. Also, Roger started wearing headphones to help him stay in sync as well as to better hear his bandmates, but this gave the impression that he was isolating himself from the audience and perhaps from the rest of the band, which might not be far from the truth as he frequently stayed separate from the band, often arriving at the concert venue by himself and leaving right after the show. He rarely, if ever, attended the after parties. However, despite his self-imposed isolation, the interpersonal relationship between Roger and the rest of the band took its toll over the course of the tour. The bullying Richard received from Roger during recording continued on the tour, and one night it got so bad that Richard flew back to England immediately following a gig, threatening to leave the band. Their manager, Steve O'Rourke, convinced him to reconsider. To make matters worse, backstage, Roger's new wife, Carolyn, and David's wife, Ginger, did not get along. Long, and this only served to create a larger rift between Roger and David. But it was the final leg of the tour that was probably the hardest for Roger. 
On the third date in, the promoters claimed they sold out Chicago's Soldier Field with an attendance of 67,000 fans. Roger, knowing what 60,000 people looked like, had his doubts, so their manager hired a helicopter with a photographer and an attorney. The resulting aerial photograph of the crowd proved that there was closer to 95,000 people, meaning the band was due several hundred thousand dollars more. Then six days later in Cleveland, Ohio, Roger dedicated their encore to the crew. You wouldn't know it, sure, if it fell on your fucking head. He was frustrated over miscues throughout the tour. Part of the problem was that he was expecting perfection from cutting edge technology, but that came with a whole host of limitations. According to Jonathan Park, they could rarely hear the music backstage, and so they relied on audio cues from the mixing board. Unfortunately, the intercom system often broke down and there were no video monitors backstage. This would inevitably lead to miscues and effects falling out of sync with the music. Then on the 28th of June at the Spectrum Theater in Philadelphia, Roger could barely move because of stomach cramps. The doctor on duty gave him an injection of muscle relaxers so that he could play the show. He later said it was the longest two hours of his life and that he should not have played as he didn't have any feelings in his hands. Regardless, the incident would inspire him to write the song Comfortably Numb. Then on July 1st, they started a four-day engagement at Madison Square Garden that just so happened to fall on the weekend of America's Independence Day celebrations. This meant that a few overzealous fans brought their own fireworks to the concert and saw fit to fire them at or near the band. By July 3rd, Roger had enough, as demonstrated by his comment right before the intermission. Don't throw any more fucking fireworks, all right? But things reached a boiling point on the evening of July 6, 1977. It was their final show of the tour and they were playing in the newly constructed Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The concert went smoothly for the most part until Roger began part two of Pigs on a Wing. He tried to wait for silence from the crowd of nearly 80,000 by strumming the first chord a couple of times. Realizing it was a hopeless cause, Roger started the song, but before he could sing the second line, a firework went off, spoiling the mood. Oh, for fuck's sake, stop letting off fireworks and shouting and screaming, I'm trying to sing the song! As the band transitioned to pigs, all seemed well until about 18 minutes into the song, when Roger started taunting someone in the crowd. According to one eyewitness, security guards actually hoisted the fan towards the stage as if they were allowing him to meet the band. But then, almost as if Roger was encouraged by the sudden change in the song's intensity, he spat on the fan. When we consider how Roger reacted to the crowd throughout the tour leading up to this moment, it's not totally surprising he would lash out in this manner, but Nick Mason thought this was way out of character. Normally, Roger was the one to quell hecklers or kill time between technical difficulties. To his credit, Roger did finish the second half of the show without incident and seemed to express some regret at the end of Us and Them. Don't worry about it. I don't. Despite this incident, there were genuine good moments on the tour, and when you listen to the live recordings, the band put on a great show. I honestly don't agree with the criticism they got. But for Roger, the Animals tour was profound and forever changed him. For all the frustrations he experienced both on stage and off, he increasingly felt the desire to build a wall, separating himself from the audience. These feelings manifested in his songwriting and in just a few years he would literally do just that with their next album, The Wall. All right, everyone, that will do it for today. Be sure to check out my three-part series on the wall to find out how the rest of this story goes. Until then, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey, everyone, thanks again for watching. Be sure to check out more of my Pink Floyd content here.